Hello and welcome back to Connect, Grow, Serve, a podcast where a couple of pastors talk about how we can take our faith and live it out in our daily life. During the season of Lent, we're talking about our sermon series, 40 Days of Renewal. I'm Pastor Chris, and with me today is Pastor Mike. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well, man. Yeah? Good to be here. Good, good. So during the season of Lent, we're talking about the sermons like I talked about. And um, we this little past week was a sermon by Pastor Tim. He did week number two. Yep. Um, what do you think about it? You know, you did the first one. So Pastor Tim kind of, you know, took your took your direction and kind of went with it for the second one. So, yeah, it was great. Uh, I think he really kind of continued on some of the same themes. Right. Yeah. So um, talking about renewal, renovation. Um, we'll, we'll go over some of it, obviously. But yeah, talked about control, you know, like how much control are we willing to give up in, in this process of letting yeah. God change us? Well, let's talk um, about the renewal thing, because that's like the whole deal yeah. we're talking about right now. So I think we should yeah. just talk about that now. Um, last week, we mentioned renewal quite a bit. And it's this process, um, you know, based on your sermon of looking inward and deciding, you know, what's from God, what isn't from God, what do I need to change? What do I need to work on? And Pastor Tim really talked a lot about that this time and like the the struggles that come with that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it kind of reminds me of a metaphor that we used a a year ago Mm -hmm. for a different Lent series that we did. Um, But this metaphor of growth, right? And Mm so um, for a plant to grow, you got to put a seed in the ground, right? Right. You learned about this in elementary school. The seed changes and roots come out and blah, blah, blah. But the thing that actually happens is the seed dies. Right. So something has to die for new life to happen. Right. Right. And so it's powerful. A lot of times in Christian life, we get excited about the new thing. Yeah. We get excited about the transformation, right? Mm -hmm. That's like a buzzword in Christian culture for a while. Right. But unfortunately, the reality is that something has to die first. And that's Mm. what we were talking about with the metaphor of renovation, right? Like you got to demolish the bad stuff. Yeah. Um, And so Pastor Tim was talking about that too. He used a metaphor of, you know, he's got this home in Virginia Mm -hmm. that, you know, he and his wife are going to retire to someday. Mm -hmm. He found a spot that the wall was damaged or wet or something, right? I actually haven't heard this. He didn't talk about this online, so keep going. I'm interested. Okay. Yeah. So um, he found a spot in the wall that was, you know, damaged, water damaged. Mm -hmm. And so he talked about how he was really tempted to just like kind of paint over it. Oh, yeah. You know, Uh just like, just put a little like chemical killer on there and then paint over it and nobody will know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think landlords do that all the time. (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) It's really easy to hide those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, you know, he, he said he thought about it and realized, okay, you know, that's not really the right thing to do. If I want to take care of this home long term, you know, we got to really find the problem. You know, we got to get the rotted material out. Right. We got to find out if there's a leak somewhere, all that kind of stuff. So and that brings up a really interesting point because we talked about this last week and Matt, Pastor Tim really dived into it. But renovation is a very painful process. There's a lot there's a lot you have to put into it and um, a lot you have to sacrifice with it. But I also think um, it, it has so much of a benefit to it because yeah. imagine Pastor Tim just painted over that. Even though no one else would be able to see it, he would constantly have that in the back of his mind. Anytime he smelt mold or anything like that, maybe was a little musty, he'd be thinking, oh no, you know, how bad is this problem now? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And so that's the the temptation we have, right? As as people, it's like, well, if I ignore this long enough, it'll go away. Yeah. You You can justify it to yourself. Right. It's not that bad. It was probably just somebody spilt water there. You know, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's not that bad that, um, you know, I, I'm just making this up. It's not that bad that I got divorced. Like me and God are still tight or it's not that bad that I had this traumatic death in my family. Right. I still got my faith. I'm, I'm moving forward. Right. When you don't address the problem when you don't address the trauma, yeah. Then, and then it can become a lot worse. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, it's not always trauma. It it could also just be um, habits that were ingrained in us, right? Yeah. So maybe from your family upbringing or sort of the career path that you've chosen. Oh, yeah. There's this sort of drive for perfectionism or never mm-hmm. admitting that you have weaknesses or, 
you know, never depending on other people. That was the way you were raised or something like that. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not that bad. Like I, yeah. I believe in Jesus. Like I can keep going this way. You know, you brought up a really interesting thing, like the way you were raised and it immediately brought something to mind to me. I think I talked about this in one of my devotionals. Um, but when I was brought up, um, it was never explicitly said, but there was this idea of walk it off. And I'm sure you've heard that before, but yeah. you, you know, when you're a boy and you fall and you get a scrape, so just get up and walk it off. Right. And, um, that can work, you know, to an extent, there are some things that we overreact as, um, children that we shouldn't, or even as, as adults, yeah. but that idea that you just need to get past it can cause so much damage. Like you just need to paint over it because you're not actually dealing with the problem where, you know, yeah. walking it off in, in even a literal sense, you know, you, you could be causing more damage by continuing instead of addressing the problem in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. So that that brings to mind something else Pastor Tim talked about in the sermon. He talked a lot about expectations. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious what you think about that, because I think he made a really important point mm -hmm. that he said our expectations for our spiritual growth. Um, and this process of renewal, they can't be too high. Right. And they also can't be too low. Right. So, you know, you're talking about that experience as a kid, like walk it off. Right. Yeah. And I, I got young kids too. Mm -hmm. So I, sometimes as a parent, it's hard to know where do I find that right middle ground of expectations mm -hmm. where I let my kid acknowledge their problem, um, but also don't let them get stuck in it. Right. And so as we think about spiritual renewal, I think there's an element of that too, where yeah. it's like, we don't ignore the problem, right. like the the wet wall or whatever. We don't ignore it, but we also don't want to be like these uh, DIY horror stories where somebody, <laughs> somebody stick opens, a sledgehammer to the wall. And yeah, exactly. Somebody opens up the wall because they know it needs to be handled. Yeah. But then like six months later the wall is still unfinished because oh, yeah. they don't know what to do or how to fix it or, right. or whatever. So anyway, like yeah. I'm curious what you thought about that point of expectations. Yeah. I, I think it's a really, um, first of all, I think it's a really good point. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever thought of it that way. So basically pastor Tim, he was talking about expectations of, um, what it's like to be on this journey with Jesus, what it's, yeah. what renewal is like. And he said, you know, if you have too little expectation, then you just expect to sit back and have God do everything for you. Yeah. And then if you have too much expectation, then you get disappointed that you're not this holy, divine, pious person right. that is perfect in every way because right. you've already, you know, you've already accepted Jesus. So you should be good to go. Yeah. And I, I think that's so good because I've, I've fallen on both sides of that and I know people on both sides of that too. And for me, um, I typically fall on the side of I'm disappointed in myself and mm. I'm upset and I'm like, why am I not further along? Why am I not better? Yeah. You know, when that's just, that's a bad expectation, right? Like right. just because, you know, if we're going to use the renewal, like renovation thing, just because I, I start breaking down a wall doesn't mean the wall is immediately going to fix itself. Right. You know, that, that takes time. That takes knowledge and energy and community and et cetera. So I think it's a really good analogy um, but it's, it's really hard to kind of recognize where you are in that. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the tricky question is, um, how do we, how do we find the right middle ground? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't know that pastor Tim gave us the exact, um, middle ground. I, I think he would probably say that it's going to be different for all of us. Sure. sure. Um, which I would agree with. But I think it has to be in conversation with God. Um, sure. It has to be, you have to collaborate. And he talked about that a lot too. He says, God invites us to collaborate on the renewal. Yeah. It's not about him doing all the work with us just sitting there watching. And it's not about us doing all the work with God just cheering us on from the sidelines. Right. You know, it has to be both and, both yeah. God and do us doing it together. So yeah. yeah, I think it's it's that continual conversation with him every time you're working on something, bringing him into the conversation. But also, you know, spending the like actually getting out and working on it yourself. You know, yeah. I mean, a great a great a great example is um, that pervades the church community and every other community is a porn addiction. Like, let's say somebody has an addiction like that. Uh -huh. um, you know, they better take the steps necessary, like deleting apps off their phones, like putting firewalls up, whatever. If you don't right. actually put that work in, 
you you're right. not you're not setting yourself up for for success you right know? right but i think it's also true what you're saying about conversation right mm -hmm. so conversation implies talking and listening yes you that's know true and so i think it's important for us to find the right expectation level in this renewal process we gotta mm -hmm. always be in conversation with the lord we gotta be in conversation with scripture yeah which is you know one way specifically of conversing with the lord sure we got to be in conversation with community yeah right so um you know the lord in prayer the lord in meditation listening silence whatever it might be mm -hmm. and then also conversation with scripture so that we're constantly reminded of the truth yeah you know the truth of who we are who god says we are his love for us all those things and then in community too right because yeah. community is so important to helping us see where our expectations might be off yeah you know somebody can say hey man like you're being like way too hard on yourself or you know somebody saying like hey why do you think you're still struggling with this maybe there's something going on where you need to put in a little more effort or right. whatever it might be um yeah so I, I think that conversation is so key when we're thinking about our expectations for renewal yeah i think that's really good and i think both of those have bringing God in the conversation and bringing community in the conversation are just really about bringing the problem into light and acknowledging it. Oh yeah. And so that means acknowledging it on every part of your life with, with people that you're close to and trust and with God. Cause yeah. if you ignore the problem and you pretend it's not there, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The problem doesn't go away. In fact, what we've been talking about for the past two weeks is in the, in fact, if you ignore it, the problem gets worse. Sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And that reminds me too, like, Colossians is our main text mm -hmm. for this series. You know, Colossians 1 he talks about uh, Jesus rescued us from the dominion of darkness mm -hmm. and has brought us into the light. Yep. And that's so important. Mm -hmm. Like, we got to stay in the light. You know, it's a process. Um, our expectations for renewal can go up and down, but we got to stay in the light. Yeah. You know, and that means uh humility that mm -hmm. means honesty that means accountability with others yeah. you know all those things are so important as we seek out renewal that's really good and i, I do want to something just came to mind i do also also stress you know we're talking about all this work that needs to be done and you know feeling guilty and you know not addressing problems i i do want to also address there is a tremendous amount of grace in all of this oh sure if you mess up or you know if you're thinking at this point oh i've ignored that problem way too long now like if I address it now, it's it's going to be impossible to overcome. Yeah. And I just want to say, you know, no, you know, in fact, the yeah, maybe the best time to do it was 50 years ago. But the second best time to do it is right now. And God's going to take you through that whole process with grace. Yeah. And so, yeah, there, there is grace that will meet you there yeah. in the in this renewal process. Yeah. So, I mean, another way to think about it is. Well, because I think I'm probably similar to you where my expectations of myself and my spiritual growth mm -hmm. are probably really high and mm -hmm. I am hard on myself. So another way to think about that is if we're going to have those high expectations of growth and transformation and renewal, like we also have to remember to have high expectations of God's forgiveness, yeah. God's love, mm -hmm. God's grace and mercy to us always be in there. Yeah. You know, that's important. Yeah. So it's not just expectations of what's going to happen to us. It's expectations of what God has promised for us yeah. and will do for us as we try to do this process. That's a really good word. I, I think it's so funny. You know, we're, we're talking about you just said God brought us out of darkness, like Jesus brought us out of darkness and brought us into the light. And it's it's so interesting when you put it into perspective, you know, God Jesus saved you and me, and we can believe that, and we're okay with that, but we often struggle in our humanity to believe that he can save us from our little problems. Yeah. You know, and that's just, that's a crazy reality to think about. Like, if you really believe Jesus died for you, then, you know, apply that faith to your daily life. God yeah. can rescue you and save you and give you grace for these problems. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. That's really good. I, one more thing I want to talk about, and I'd love to just, you know, take this and say, how can we apply this? But Pastor Tim said the hardest part of the journey for us most of the time is going to be the unlearning. So it's unlearning old habits. Yeah. And, you know, we unlearn those like we talked about last week to put um, God's decrees and his rule into our lives. 
Yeah. And so what did you think about that? I, I thought that was pretty wise. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, I've always been a sports fan. Mm-hmm. You know, I grew of a, I grew up playing a variety of sports. And so I love watching different sports now. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I remember growing up, some coach or some teacher told me along the way, you know, you hear that adage, practice makes perfect. Right. That's, that's a pretty common mm-hmm. thing that you hear. And this guy said, no, actually, that's wrong. Perfect practice makes perfect. Mm. Okay. So the obvious idea being like, if you're practicing the wrong way, yeah. you're going to build bad habits. Yep. You know, so whatever sport you're playing, activity you're doing, you know, you might routinely do something that brings you success in the short term. Sure. But if you're doing it the wrong way, eventually you're going to have trouble unlearning it. Yeah. Because eventually it's not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, man, this is the way I've always done it. Yeah. And then, and then it's harder because you have those habits built in. That's really good. Yeah. And so I think some of that is just human nature, right? You know, like whatever maybe is easiest or works the best, or we find successful early on, we're going to repeat that in Mm -hmm. anything we do in life. And so when it comes to our spiritual lives, you know, I think it's true too. Like, we think, oh man, um, this is how I've heard from God in the past, or this is right. how God has helped me grow in the past, right. or or if it's sort of on the other side, like this is how I got over this painful thing or got through this difficult thing. Well, sure. then we're going to default to that. Yeah, and it and makes so, sense. And so uh, there's, you know, that's just part of being human. It's not something to beat right. ourselves up about it. But yeah, Pastor Tim is right. Like, man, that's a challenge when you have to unlearn that. Yeah, it's like. Look, this may have worked before, but it's not really the best thing in my relationship with the Lord, or right, and and or even like the best that. thing for me, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, when I was when I was in high school, I got through all of my. I didn't do very well in high school, but I got through high school without studying. I I was good. At, I understood the content well enough to where I could just make it through high school without studying. And when I got to college, it was a rude awakening because I could not do that anymore. Yeah. And it was a painful process to actually learn how to study because I had learned these terrible habits for so long of just how to get by yeah. that I actually had to learn like something new. And before I could learn that, I had to unlearn how to just procrastinate, basically. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the unlearning is painful, but it's it's an important part of the process because otherwise, you know, you're you have two habits competing for each other. I think right. is what it gets to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that goes back to the idea of honesty, mm-hmm. humility, and and being able to see see the problem. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Uh, so what should we what should we do to unlearn? You know, like if if we think we have some of those habits, um, let's say I've identified one. We can take me in high school. You know, let's let's make it very practical. I have this habit of procrastinating. You know, yeah. what what's the process to unlearning that? Um, in our, let's in a spiritual way. Um, you know, I would say the first thing is we talked about conversation, right? So, you know, whatever you're trying to unlearn, bring God, bring community into the conversation. Yeah. 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 Definitely conversation. Part of that is evaluation, right? Yeah. So it's like, how does this thing cost me? Mm -hmm. Like take the time to, to analyze it and evaluate it. How is this costing me? Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, uh, another example, like I'm not spending time in scripture, Yeah. you know, and, and so, uh, you know, maybe it's, I got young kids or I got to get to my job, my job's super demanding, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm not spending time in scripture and you realize right. that has to change. Well, the unlearning process is recognizing what's the cost of that, mm-hmm. you know, and then saying, yeah, it's going to cost me something to change this habit. Right. But not changing is more costly. Yeah. Um, so that's a big part of unlearning too. And then I think it's, you know, I think it's uh, that conversation with the Lord, obviously prayer, asking for grace and mercy and mm-hmm. forgiveness for the things that we have done in the past, uh, for the Lord's presence and power to help us change it. Yeah. Um, and then just, again, trying to soak in the truth of what God says yep. so that when we're tempted to go back to that old thing, mm-hmm. we now recognize with a new sense of the Lord's presence that, you know what, that's, that's not good for me. 
Yeah, I really like that. And I, I this is what you're saying, but just to add on, you know, it's going to require a bit of faith to to trust that oh, what sure. God has for you is actually better. Yeah. Um, I know for me, I justify a lot. Well, you know, I'm not going to do this thing yeah. because what I'm doing is better. Yeah. And, you know, it might be better in the short term, like we talked about learning or unlearning bad habits. But in the long term, you know, the thing that God has for you um, is truly better. Yeah. And it's better because we were created to be with God. Yeah. And he knows that's what's best for us. Yeah. And yeah. so as 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 uh, unintuitive as that seems for a human to like not make your own decision about what's best for you, yeah. you have to trust that God actually knows what's best for you. Yeah. And that's going to take faith. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So, so we got to unlearn at the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I was also thinking about sort of how do we get to some sort of finish line? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. our series and study here is, right. is going on. So we're not really at a finish line yet, but I was really struck by something Pastor Tim brought up actually at the beginning of his message, you know, mm -hmm. so he, he read from Philippians chapter one, right. Right. Which is a prayer of Paul for that church. And, you know, this verse says, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion mm -hmm. until the day of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So there's this idea that God's going to finish the work, mm -hmm. you know, God's there. He's going to bring you to completion. Mm -hmm. And so that made me kind of wonder, well, what does that look like? Like, what yeah. does it mean to reach some level of completion in this journey of renewal? Sort of what, what's our goal? Yeah. Well, I think the, the journey is the focus. And even as you said that, I think, you, you know, you, Jesus, God is going to bring you on this journey to completion. He's going to bring you through it. And yeah, the, the goal, I think, is um, relationship with God. And, you know, that that perfect relationship is something that we acknowledge we'll probably never fully get. Sure. But he'll continue to bring you closer to that as you, you know, as you go on this journey with him. Yeah. You know, and what that actually looks like for each of us, I think, is different. And I think that's what's really cool and beautiful about um, each of our relationship with Jesus is that it is a little bit different. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it. I think it's really about the fact that there is that goal and we're going to keep getting closer to it um, until Jesus comes back um, or until we, until we meet him in heaven. But uh, we, that, that relationship continues to get better and better and better. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you nailed it. I mean, I think two things. One, I would say it's never fully complete yeah. until we're celebrating with Jesus in heaven, mm -hmm. right? Until Christ returns and you know all of his followers are celebrating for eternity so yeah. that is one thing that we have to keep in mind that some of our spiritual journey just won't be 100 percent complete right this side of eternity right at the same time i also just encourage people like it's so important just to celebrate the little victories yeah along the way Absolutely. right so you're running a marathon. Mm -hmm. You got to celebrate when you get to five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles, yeah. whatever it is, even if it's not the ultimate finish line. Absolutely. You know, I mean, think about like uh, addict recovery yeah. process, right? Yeah. So somebody who's going through the recovery process, trying to get sober, yeah. like their goal is to be sober, but they get something to celebrate when they've been sober for one month yep. when they've been sober for six months when they've been sober for five years whatever it is yeah so they keep celebrating even though they know that the journey is not really finished right and so i think that's so important in this renewal process it's like again that thing of expectations mm -hmm. like you're shooting for a goal you mm -hmm. want to grow your relationship with the lord but hey celebrate those victories along the way that's yeah. so important I love that example of the addict um, celebrating, you know, incrementally, because yeah. I think it just shows the power of celebration because that's such a practical example. They wouldn't be doing that unless it worked in some way to help on your road to recovery. Yeah. So if we can take that and apply it to our lives and say, you know, celebrate the little things um, and make a big deal out of those things because they really are a big deal. And that will uh, help you so much more on your journey to this idea of holiness or being more like Jesus because yeah. each, each small thing you celebrate and um, you get excited about, I think it also helps everybody else in the room, right? Yeah, of course. You know, when, when you see somebody that's celebrating a victory, you get to celebrate with them and that just 
ultimately brings more glory to God. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right on. That was really good. Um, well, thanks for talking with me about this uh, second week in the sermon series. And uh, this was a really good one. I'm excited to see what we're going to talk about next week. But yeah, uh, yeah, as we make this journey to renewal together, um, I think we're all learning a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, it should be good. So uh, I'll just uh, encourage folks again, because I know you did a lot of work on it um, to engage in the devotional. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a great way to make sure that you're in that conversation with the Lord mm -hmm. as we're thinking about renewal, as we're thinking about um, what needs to change in my life. Yeah. You got to be in scripture and the Lord will help you see those things and help you make progress on it. Absolutely. Thanks for that. Yeah. I would encourage you to look at it. Um, it's their short devotionals available to you through the app or the website. Um, but the cool thing is, yeah, it brings you in conversation with God. That's the whole point of the devotional is just to connect you to God. And uh, we all need that little bit of help. So yep. it's a good way to get started. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for being with me. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. This has been the Connect, Grow, Serve podcast. It is hosted by Chris Timpson and Mike Kelly, who are pastors at Astera Church. Video, audio, and logo have been done by Gilworth. The podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts and from our website. The video version of this podcast is available on the Estero Church YouTube channel. We hope this podcast helps you connect with God, grow in your faith, and serve others well. Well,